So let's see if you have the math skills to solve this math word problem. Now, if you're not sure how to solve this problem, you're like, this is too complex for me, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, don't run away from the video because by the time this video finishes, you're going to learn a lot and you'll know exactly how to solve this problem. But uh, let's take a look at the question. It is a word problem and uh, it is as follows. A six foot tall man cast a shadow of 15 feet how tall is a tree next to the man if its shadow is 100 feet? All right, now I will reread this question in just one second, but uh, this is a multiple choice question. And here are our choices. So A, 6.7 feet, B, 16.7 feet, C, 35 feet, and D, 40 feet. Now, uh, first things first, first, when you have a math word problem, always use the rule of three. Now, this is my rule, but basically it's just common sense. And that is read the problem at least three times before you start to do anything. In other words, a lot of uh, students or people will be like, okay, I read the problem once, I understand what's going on, there's a man, there's a shadow, there's a tree, and uh, you know, people are eager to answer the question and they'll just start you know, going off in one particular direction. Now, sometimes they'll do okay, but oftentimes they'll be like, wait a minute, I think I'm a little bit lost. I gotta go back to the prom. Oh my goodness, I was I was trying to answer the wrong question. I didn't even understand the question right. And then you go off in the right direction. This wastes too much uh, time. So for those of you that actually still have to take math exams, uh, you know, get in the habit of reading your question, uh, reading these questions uh, nice and slow. Let your brain kick in. And even if you're not a math student, in terms of having to take tests or get a grade, uh, the correct way to solve any problem is to understand the problem first. So give your uh, brain you know, some time to kind of reflect on it. And uh, the best thing to do once you understand the question, now uh, to identify the question in a problem, I know this seems kind of obvious, but uh, you need to identify where the question mark is and then back up from there, right? Oftentimes, uh, math, uh, the question in a math word problem is a little sneaky, so you got to really make sure that you understand, okay, what is this question asking? So uh, specifically, the question here is uh, the shadow, right? So um, how tall is a tree? How tall, right? So this is how tall is a tree uh, uh, next to the man if its shadow is 100 feet. But basically, the question is how tall is the tree? That is the question. All right, so we have uh, a multiple choice question here. And uh, let's kind of, you know, use some common sense here. Now, if you have a six foot tall man, and here's a six foot tall man, and its shadow is, or his shadow is 15 feet. So here's six feet and 15 feet. Uh, you're kind of looking at this, or if you thought about it for a second, would you expect that if the tree cast a shadow of 100 feet that it would be like six feet tall or 6.7 feet tall uh, maybe that doesn't make a lot of sense and indeed this uh, is not correct and neither is this the correct answer is d so uh, one thing that can help you out especially if you're not sure how to answer a question like uh, this on some sort of exam or test is to you uh, use common sense and uh, eliminate what you think is you know, definitely not reasonable answer. So uh, that is a really important aspect to solving any math problem, especially a word problem, is when you get your final answer, you always need to judge your answer and say, is this a reasonable answer? You know, just kind of use uh, your common sense here. But uh, to uh, really solve this problem, what we need to do is come up with some sort of model of the situation. Because if you can kind of visualize the problem, oftentimes, uh, this is the way you can see the solution. So let's go ahead and uh, identify what the question here, a question is again here is, well, oh, that was poor grammar. See, this is why I stick to math and not grammar. But uh, anyways, how tall is the tree next to the man if its shadow uh, is 100 feet? All right, so you're thinking about how tall is the tree? All right, so maybe uh, we want to kind of do this and uh, sketch out here's the ground and here's the tree. So we're looking for the height of the tree and we have uh, the shadow of the tree, which is 100 feet, right? So we'll go back to our, our problem, like, yeah, that makes sense. But we also have this man and uh, his shadow. But before we get to the man and his shadow uh, in this particular uh, sketch, we need to make some assumptions here, all right? And this is something that is not in the problem, but I'm gonna tell you to go ahead uh, and make these assumptions, and that is this. In this kind of basic geometry word problem, 
we have a tree uh, and the ground, right? So there, the tree is obviously planted in the ground. The man is standing on the ground. So we need to assume, and it's okay to assume, and if you want to ask your teacher, that's perfectly fine. We need to assume that this tree is perpendicular to the ground. Okay, that's a very critical assumption. In other words, that this tree hasn't been through some sort of hurricane. It's kind of bent over like this, right? And you're like, well, maybe the tree is this way, or maybe the tree is that way. Maybe the man is leaning back like so. You know, uh, you don't kind of overthink these basic word problems. So if you're like, well, this is uh, probably perpendicular to the ground, just go ahead and make that assumption. And um, if you're not sure, you can ask your teacher. But if they don't tell you, just assume that. And this is uh, especially critical for those of you that still have to make or take, excuse me, math exams. All right, so we're going to assume that this tree is uh, perpendicular. And what perpendicular means, and you can see this little symbol right here, is that uh, the tree and the ground form a 90 degree angle, a right angle. This is going to be critically important as we get into the rest of this problem. But here is our question. We want to know how tall the tree is if its shadow is 100 feet. But we have this man here. Uh, we know how tall the man is, and we actually know the length of the shadow of this man. Okay, so we have the sun hanging out over here. Okay, matter of fact, I'll draw a little sun because it's just so fun to draw a sun. So here is the sun, and it's casting its lovely rays in this direction right here. So we have the tree. It's casting a shadow of 100 feet. There's a man next to the tree that's six foot tall, okay? And the man's shadow is 15 feet, okay? So the sun is right here, and uh, the shadow and the height of the man and his shadow and the height of the tree and the tree's shadow is what we would, what we would call proportional, okay? So uh, that word right there, a lot of people use that word, but they don't really understand what it means. Of course, I'm going to explain this here in a second, but uh, they are proportional because um, obviously the sun, whatever is um, perpendicular to the ground, it's going to cast the same, uh, um, the length of the shadow will be in, in the same proportion as whatever is sticking up out of the ground. All right, so hopefully that kind of makes sense, but uh, our figure right here is not too, um, you know, informative. Yes, we have the tree and the shadow and the man and its shadow, but what we need to do is kind of distill or simplify this uh, sketch here into something more practical. All right, so we know the tree is going to be perpendicular to the ground, and we have to make the assumption with the man as well. So we're going to simplify this into this little figure right here. Okay, so here is the ground. Here, this little length right here is the height of the tree, and we'll use a variable x to represent uh, that height, and that's what we're looking for. And here is the shadow of the tree, and here is the height of the man. And um, we're going to kind of simplify this concept for him to be kind of perpendicular, standing perpendicular uh, to the ground, and his shadow is 15 feet. <clears throat> okay, so again, the height uh, of a whatever, okay, it could be the, a man, a tree, doesn't make a difference, uh, a flagpole, um, whatever height is coming out of the ground, uh, whatever shadow, the length of that particular item or object or whatever that's casting a shadow is going to have the same proportion, right? So that is what this means. Here is our lovely sun and everything that's, you know, in this kind of realm, all right? We don't want to overthink this again. Like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, but, uh, you know, there's the curvature of the earth, et cetera, et cetera. And indeed, we can kind of take it to the next level, but uh, let's keep it nice and simple. All right, so this is a more practical situation. And if you notice here, I kind of constructed uh, a triangle, right? So we can kind of connect these two things right here and form two right triangles. All right, so these two triangles are in proportion. All right, now what does that mean? What does this term uh, proportion mean? Well, I'll explain this in just one second, but let's go ahead and um, do this first, and that is have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, i got to sneak this in before we really get into this proportion stuff, and um, this is important not only for me personally. Yes, indeed, you know, I would be like, uh, not telling you the truth. I'm like, oh, no, I don't really care. Yeah, of course I care. You know, I want to see my YouTube channel do as well as possible, but uh, really the biggest uh, satisfaction I get out of posting these videos is helping other people learn math. That's what it's all about for me. I mean, I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have uh, 3,000, I think, uh, videos. And, um, you know, my first videos were, you know, terrible. But, uh, you know, I've just did the best I could and I've tried to improve in time. 
with the goal to make math interesting, but most importantly, make math attainable, uh, easy to understand for anyone out there that is trying to learn the subject. So if you want to check out my full main math courses, that's where you'll find my best math instruction. So things like we're talking about in this particular video, like ratios and proportions, you can find uh, you know more on these type of basic uh, word problems and geometry word problems. In a few courses, you can check out my math skills rebuilder course, uh, my pre-algebra course, or my Algebra 1 course, or even my Geometry course. All right, so let's get back into this problem. So we're using this term proportional. So what does that mean? All right, so a proportion, okay, is what uh, we can define in math as two equal fractions, okay, or uh, two equal rates and ratios. This is a big, big topic, but uh, let me go ahead and explain this right here. All right, so... Um, uh, what uh, we can kind of understand in terms of uh, what's going on in this scenario is that the height of something, the height of the man to its shadow, okay, if we can make this comparison as a fraction, it's going to be equal in value as the height of the tree to its shadow, okay? So here we have two equal uh, fractions, and by definition, two equal fractions, and by the way, a fraction uh, with units of measure, uh, measures, excuse me, uh, could be called a ratio or a rate. For example, 60 miles per one hour, right? Otherwise known as 60 miles per hour or 60 miles per hour. This is a rate, but it is a fraction with the units of measure where the units um, are completely different. Here, this is distance, this is time, this is technically a rate, but uh, mathematically, the value here is a fraction. So it's two equal rates or ratios, okay, when we have, um, again, two uh, equal fractions, that is a proportion, all right? This is a big topic, and again, if you want to learn more about this, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel, but hopefully you get the idea. So let's make this quick comparison here, and uh, let's just come up with two equal fractions. So I'm going to use the fraction one-half. Okay, so can you think of another fraction that is equivalent to one-half? Now, we want a, uh, a fraction that's equal to one-half, but let's use different numbers. How about like maybe 5 over 10? All right, so here are two equal fractions. Uh, now, of course, 5 over 10 uh, it has different numbers than the fraction of one-half, but this is what we call a proportion. Now, when you have a proportion, something applies that is always true, and that is called the cross product. So if we cross multiply uh, the products here, uh, they're going to be equal. So one times 10 is what? That's 10. Two times five is what? That's 10. So the cross product is true. So this is a property that you always need to keep in mind when it comes to proportions. All right, so uh, let's get back to our actual problem here. All right, so the height of the person to, uh, its, to the man's shadow is going to be in proportion to the height of the tree to its shadow. All right, so we can kind of set up this proportion, and uh, we need to be very careful here that the numerators here are the height and the denominators are the shadow. Now, you can have the shadow uh, in the numerator and the height down in the denominator. It doesn't make a difference, but you have to uh, compare the same units of measure. In other words, you can't have uh, height to shadow is equal to shadow to height, right? So that's not going to work. So you got to have to um, have height to shadow to height to shadow or shadow to height uh, to shadow to height. That will work as well, okay? As long as you always keep the same units uh, in the respective uh, positions in terms of these fractions, we can set up this proportion and solve this problem. Okay, so let's go to plug in the information that we know. So we have the height of the uh, man. We can plug that in right there. We have his uh, shadow. Uh, we don't know the height of the tree. That's what we're going for. But So we could put that right there. But we know the shadow, the length of the shadow of the tree. So we could put that right there. And then, of course, we can use the cross product to solve for the height of the tree. All right, so let's put this all together. And here we go. All right, so 6 uh, is to 15 as x is to 100. All right, so I'm even using this fancier kind of proportional language. And, uh, you know, uh, for those of you who are like, boy, you're going too fast, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, you know, I don't want to make this video overly uh, lengthy, uh, but, um, you know, if you're not understanding, you certainly need to do some additional work beyond this video because this is a really important math concept. All right, so 6 is to 15, all right, the height of the man to its shadow is equal to or is in proportion to the height of the tree, 
to its shadow. So here is the proportion that we're going to set up. And now we're going to apply the cross product to solve for x. Okay, so once again, remember the cross product is this property right here. 1 times 10 is 10. 2 times 5 is 10. So we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to do this right here. And again, this is a proportion. All right, so uh, the one there are other properties of proportions that you'll need to learn. But if you always remember the cross product, you'll um, you know that will pretty much cover 99% of the uh, type. Well, the cross product will solve like 99% of the proportion problems you'll have to solve. Let me just kind of state it that way. But there are other properties or proportions uh, uh, that you will learn in courses like geometry. Okay, so let's apply uh, the cross product to solve for x. We're going to have to use some basic algebra, nothing too crazy, but let's go to do this right now. So 6 over 15 is equal to x over 100. I notice here I have two uh, equal fractions. And by the way, this is a good reminder for those of you that are taking basic algebra. If you come across an equation like this, and you're like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what do I do right here? I'm a little confused. Well, notice you have one fraction, and it's equal to another fraction. So when you see that, you have a proportion, or you can think of that situation as a proportion, uh, indicating that you can use a cross product. All right, so x times 15, right, is going to be equal to 6 times 100. All right, so let's do that right now. And let me scroll down here. So x times 15 is 15x. 6 times 100 will be 6 times 100. So we have 15x is equal to 6 times 100. It, of course, is 600. Now we get to solve for x by simply dividing both sides of the equation by 15. So x is equal to 600 divided by 15, which is 40 feet. All right, so this is how we solve this particular basic uh, word problem. But, uh, you know, this term basic... Uh, you know, sometimes it's not that good of a descriptor in terms of what someone may know. Like, hey, this is basic math. Well, it's all relative. I mean, if you, you know, only know how to count, this isn't basic math. You know, but if you at one time in your life you understood trigonometry and calculus, well, this should be kind of basic. But uh, for those of you out there that maybe uh, have been away from math for a long time, and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I was doing this stuff way back in 1964, or whatever the case might be. Um, matter of fact, I have a lot of members in my um, academy, my math academy, and, and this a lot of members that are uh, kind of relearning math just because they either miss it or for whatever uh, particular reason, old, older adults, right? I say that kind of respectfully because I'm one of them. But uh, I think math is one of these things like riding a bike, you know, for a lot of people. It's like, you know, hopefully, you know, uh, that you can, you know, if you've been away from riding a bike for, you know, 20 years, you could probably get back on it and without, you know, too much trouble and figure out how to ride that thing again. And I think that's the way it is for a lot of the skills that we learn uh, well, okay, the first time. The problem is a lot of people out there really never had an opportunity to learn math, uh, you know, correctly, okay? And that's particularly true for those of us that, you know, if you think back when you were in uh, middle school, high school, whatever the case is, you just wanted to get through your class and then get out of school. Uh, but for those of you that are motivated to want to really learn math, you can definitely go as far as possible. And uh, hopefully, I can be a part of your math journey. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.